Welcome to another episode of Tippy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have a nice mail day to talk about. Actually, not a mail day because I bought these cards in person. Actually, not these cards, but the cards in this box. And don't worry, they're not Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I've never owned a Yu-Gi-Oh box before, but they're magic cards in here. And all the cards today, the entire episode, is all about foreign black bordered cards and then the Asian variants that we have. So we've got Korean, we've got Japanese, We've got uh, traditional Chinese and we've got simplified Chinese. And we're going to talk about those today, looking at the cards that I picked up in Taipei at my friends over at Cartmaster um, and kind of discussing the difference between those versions. And at the same time, I'm just going to kind of show you what I bought during my trip in uh, Taipei. I actually was in Taiwan for a few weeks, just on a regular holiday. But, um, you know, I just was too tempted and I kind of knew there was a store in Taipei, that's pretty big. So I decided just to go there. The store's name, so was Cardmaster. So I went to Cardmaster and uh, and I bought a lot of old school magic cards, all foreign black bordered and all J Japanese, uh, Chinese or Korean. So we're just gonna dive into this box. I'm gonna show you what I picked up. By what name are you known? There are some who call me Tim. Okay, so uh, let's dive into this. It's always nice when you buy them and then you go and have a, a throwback. Um, so yeah, I got some sleeves, some katana sleeves. They're they're my favorite. Um, I was there anyway, so I just I just picked them up. Nothing special there. Then I have oh let's see I've got this little little box. This is um, the first cards that I bought because I've been to the store twice. The first time I came, they didn't really know what to do with me. I came in and I said, okay guys, I'm looking for old school cards, 1993, 1994. I'm also looking for foreign black border cards, you know, Japanese, Chinese, that stuff. But um, the teller really didn't know any English or like a very limited amount of English. And they sell a lot of different card games there. So he was kind of like, oh, magic, magic, yeah, I've got this. So he showed me Bloomboro and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, I'm not looking for that magic. I'm looking for the real magic. And then he was super confused. So I ended up talking to the boss. Well, actually, I first left the store, almost left the store, and then uh, I came past a glass case, and there were old school magic cards in there that I bought. So those cards are in here, I'll show you. And it was actually thanks to my uh, girlfriend who joined me. She never joins me when I do this stuff, but she joined me on this trip, uh, because we were of course in Taipei together. So I said, let's just quickly go to this store and have a look. And she said, hey, aren't these kind of the cards that you usually play with? And I said, well, probably not, but I had a look and yeah, in the glass case, they had these cards. So I bought this one, Mana Short. And as you can see, it still has the price tag on it. I will actually try to show the prices of the cards uh, while I show them to you. So you have kind of an idea how much they're worth, um, you know, when I picked them up in, in Taiwan. Um, so this is, um, of course, Mana Short. Beautiful condition. And... Um, Maybe you're wondering, so what language is it? So when you look at this, when you see the symbols, the symbols are kind of, I wouldn't want to say simpler, but they, they use less lines. So this is Japanese. This is how I recognize Japanese, right? So this is a Japanese copy. And they had more Japanese cards. Um, they also had the Tron Lands. So I decided to buy the Tron Lands. I mean, why did I need the Tron Lands? I have the antiquities. I think I have more Tron lands already. Um, but you know, they had them and I had to buy them and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, gonna pick them up. So here we see the set. And again, they're in, in really nice condition. And I paid 3,500, so they were quite expensive, Taiwanese dollars for this. Maybe you're wondering how much is a Taiwanese dollar? Well, about one uh, euro is about 35 Taiwanese dollars. But the condition of these cards is just really, really good. I mean, did I need them? No, um, but I still bought them nonetheless. Here you can see the back, it's, it's really good. It's just really good condition, these cards. And uh, yeah, just had a lot of fun buying them. Yeah, there's another card like, whoa, where's that other card? Because this is actually the first card I saw in that case. That's Nalatni Dragon. Very cool card, of course, from the Harper Prism. And again, this is Japanese. You can see that here. So we'll just, we'll just put those here. So these were the first few cards I bought. And then um, the, the, the clerk 
um, he, he called the owner and I spoke to the owner on the phone and his English was a lot better. And he said, just send me a list of the cards you would like in, um, in Chinese or Japanese and I'll see if I can get them for you or if we have them in stock. Um, and I tried to tell him, I said, you know, just give me, give me a box to look in because I love to do that. Just go through a whole box of cards and try to find the gems. Uh, but this, that's just not the way they work. They were like, okay, you got to send a list first. So what I did, my journey started in Taipei and I kind of went around Taiwan. So I, I said like, okay, um, I'll be back in, in two and a half weeks. And through Messenger, Facebook Messenger, I send them my list of cards that I wanted. And then they send me back the cards that they had and the prices for them. So that was quite nice. And then um, the last day that I was there in, in Taiwan and I was in Taipei, I actually picked them up. So, um, so here we go. More cards. Yeah, Zombie Master. So here you can see the price is still on 200 Taiwanese dollars for the Zombie Master. I'm just going to take them out. Why not? I believe, but please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments because I could be absolutely wrong. I believe again that this is Chinese. Uh, sorry, Japanese. Looking at the symbol. So all the Japanese ones I'm going to put over here. And this, yeah, this one is special. When I looked at this, this Pestilence card, I was like, isn't it, isn't it a fake? I mean, look at it. But um, he explained to me, no, this is Korean. And Korean symbols look completely different to the Japanese or the Chinese symbols. I mean, look at that difference. Right? So for us, it's really hard to tell. But I'm sure, of course, if you're Asian, it's super easy to tell the difference. This one is in a rough shape, by the way. It's got bends on it. I don't know if it really shows on the camera, but... There's a hole in it as well, so I'm just gonna check if my phone's still working. It seems to be a little glitchy. Oh yeah, I got these. I was really happy with these. This is Bad Moons, again in Japanese. I really like the condition that these cards are in. Really nice. The funny thing is, maybe you recognize this. I have no plans with these. I don't know what to do. I was just like, I was there and I was like, okay, if I can buy these, I'm just gonna buy them. And I, I really don't know what to do with them. So this I believe is Chinese. And I think because the full stop is here at the, not at, is it at the middle? If it's at the middle, I believe it's simplified. If it's at the bottom, it's traditional, I, I think. Let me know in the comments if I'm right or wrong. So this is another hurricane. Yeah, this is quite nice. Whirling Dervish. Yeah, really nice. I think also Chinese. More Chinese cards. The Killer Bees, of course. And then, yeah, this is definitely Chinese. We've got the War Mammoths, 3-3 three, three Trampler. Oh man, the, these some of these cards are bent. I can kind of, I think they've been, I think, I think they've been wet in the past. That's why you get these bents, I think. But they were cheap. That's a good souvenir to pick up, of course. This one, I think, again, is Japanese because of the symbols. So you can kind of see the difference, right, here. I mean, look at those symbols. So I think this one's Japanese. Oh, here, this is a nice way to see the difference. Japanese, Chinese. This one's Chinese again. Hey, crawl worm. Really sweet of being able to pick up a crawl worm. And then a dragon engine. This was actually a rare in revised. I remember pulling this out of a booster pack revised. I was so disappointed, you know, cause I, I got allowance every week for like two guilders or something. And a, a booster pack would take me three weeks to save up for one single booster pack. And then if you get a dragon engine out of your booster, you're like <laughs> super disappointed. Uh, okay, but we've got more. We've got more stuff, don't worry. Oh yeah, I was super happy with these actually because I picked up a play set of, um, of Mishra's factories. One, two, three, and four. And uh, these are Chinese. Let's make some more space. So many cards. So we've got the green cards, we've got the artifacts, we've got the Korean cards, the Japanese cards, and these are the Chinese cards. Look at this dark ritual. Doesn't that just look fantastic? I think it does. 
Paralyze. And these were pretty cheap for me to pick up, especially, of course, just these commons. And the thing is, I'm not gonna buy them, but it's just nice to have them as a souvenir. And I guess now that I have so many, I wanna start, I wanna start making, of course, a deck with only uh, cards of the Asian languages. Uh, so here we see Lanora Elves, clearly Japanese, again, when you look at the, uh, the symbol. Here, look at that difference. Look at that difference. I think personally, I prefer the Japanese, I think. Although the Chinese symbols are also beautiful. It's just a different, different style. Oh yeah, this one. This is so cool. Force of nature. <laughs> Look at this. And the quality. I mean, it's not, it's not fantastic, but I, I had to get it. I mean, look at it, it's this filth here, it's a little bit bent. But you know, it's it's. I think it's worth it, it's a memory. I'm definitely gonna play with this bad boy. I think played cards have something special, they have like a story to tell, which I really like. Then we've got cards like this, which I like, so this is Vampire Bats, but here look, Theodore Ruthke the Bat, and that's of course referring to the flavor text. Um, and I really like that, that they have a bit of that, you know, Western alphabet here mixed up with, in this case, the Chinese uh, version, which I think is really good. So we've got more of these bats. Usually I've got like a, a play set of the cheaper cards also because they had them. I mean, I so wanted to have a Shivan Dragon Japanese, but I didn't have it, unfortunately. That would have been a really sweet pickup. Um, this is Terrors. I like them Chinese. I like them this way. I think they look really cool. I mean, it's almost it's almost like um, a full art version in old school when you have them, you know, in in Asian language because you have no idea what it says. You know, you just have to know telling by the, by the picture. So we got the terrors. Yeah, this was a really sweet pickup. They're all still Chinese, by the way. Mahamoti Jin, look at this bad boy. How cool! One of my all time favorite cards. I started playing blue, not because of the counter spells not because of the control magic, not to be a mean guy, but I just loved creatures like this. I also loved Air Elemental and of course the Tim. That was a really cool card. So um, let's put this one here. So these are the blue cards and here we go. So this is the same as the card that we looked at earlier, the Vampire Bats, where you have the text here in our alphabet, in our own letters, mixed up with those of, in this case, again, the, the Chinese characters. So I really like that. And I believe I got a full play set of these. No, just one, just got the one. Thought I had a full play set. Um, then we've got power sinks. How many of these? Again, Chinese. Okay, okay, it's a full play set. I love it. Oh, and of course I picked up some Tims. I had to ask, do you have Tims? And of course I showed them my uh, uh, my YouTube channel as well, but I showed it to them to try to explain what I meant by old school magic because they were like, you're looking for real magic cards? What do you mean? What is what is a real magic card to you? And I, I guess it's a fair question, but I just explained this. I listen up in 1993 and 1994. That's when this game really, really kicked off when it all started. That's where all these collectible card games come from, you know? I'm going to put these separate because they're going to go in my, in my Timmy, Timmy binder. Oh, then we've got these Disenchants. Again, uh, Chinese. So most of these cards are Chinese. They explained to me, this is White Knight, by the way, so we've got a play set of White Knights. They explained to me that their most um, popular language there is actually Japanese. They like the characters more. That's what they told me at the store. Maybe it's also because of the tension, of course, between Taiwan and China. Um, so here we see the Air Elemental got three of those because I think I've got a fourth air elemental somewhere I think oh and I've got Merfolk of the Pearl Trident yeah oh and this is nice mind bomb I've got some mind bombs pretty happy with these a play set of mind bombs I don't have the dark version of these anymore so this is my only black bordered version now that's nice so a lot of cards and we have more I mean, I kind of went over the top. I was planning to just buy, you know, maybe 
maybe one or two cards, but then he said, send me a list of cards you would like. Yeah, that's, that's where it went wrong. And I deliberately chose a lot of cheaper cards because like I said, you're not gonna buy those cards quickly. And I thought, okay, if you have them anyway, and the price is right, I might just, well, just, you know, pick them up. Because I mean, look at a card like this, for example, Frozen Shade. How beautiful is this card in this version? I mean, the quality of printing, the fact it's black bordered. I mean, look at that blue color. Yeah, it's beautiful. Again, here we've got that writing Edgar Allan Poe silence referring to the flavor text. I just, I, I love that combination here. You know, the Western writing combined with the Chinese symbols. To me, I mean, I love it. I mean, I am one of those collectors, I guess, that <laughs> that has a really bad plan because when I see something cool from old school, I just buy it even though, what am I gonna do with these cards? Yes, I'm gonna play with them, obviously. I'm gonna put them in a deck, but I don't have enough to build a fully like Chinese or Japanese or Asian deck, however you wanna call it, but then, what that means, we know what that means, right? It means that I have to start buying more cards that are foreign black bordered, which I'm probably gonna do. One of the problems was, by the way, the basic lands are quite expensive. These are four Sengi Vampires, so full play set. I mean, these, I, I can never, these cards can never bore me out. I will always continue to be interested in these cards. Let us carrying ants. So I think carrying ants works really well with my play set of Tron lands, right? Because carrying ants, you pay one, it gets plus one, plus one. With Tron, of course, you can get a lot of mana. So that would be a nice combination. The problem with the carrying ants is it's two black in the casting cost. I wish it was one black and three. And that would make carrying ants a lot more playable in, in, in that, you know, Tron strategy. But it's a rare, I believe, originally from Legends. So what you have to realize is this is their fourth edition version, right? Because fourth edition came out in, Jap in Japanese language, in traditional Chinese, simplified Chinese. So these are all fourth edition cards. And because it was the first printing um, in those languages, they gave them a black border instead of a white border. So now you know. Okay, and then we have Brothers of Fire. <coughs> I'm probably gonna send these out to the Brothers of Fire, which is an old school club in, um, in London. So if you guys are looking, I'm probably gonna send these out to you. Look at that. So even, even though it's the same symbols, but there's a slight difference in the, in the printing quality, probably a well-known uh, printing error, but four of these, we've got stone rains again. They're all Chinese still, not a lot of Japanese cards in here, all Chinese. Oh yeah, this card is so kick-ass. This is so cool. I was so happy they had this card. I was like, oh, that's awesome. Goblin King. Obviously one of the more expensive cards I picked up, but I mean, look at it. Such a boss. So cool, and I love playing with my goblin deck. It's like so fun. So I'm gonna gonna put it in the goblin deck. I love that. And we've got Herlun Minotaur, which I believe I also have Japanese. This is again Chinese, Chinese. I just love this art of Ensematics. It used to be on the revised booster box, so I've always had like a special connection with this card. I think the art is just stunning. So we got these, then we've got Mount Goblin Raiders. These little boys were quite uh, quite expensive, which I guess is understandable. Maybe they were like collectors. Okay, so, and then we've got Hill Giant. Maybe you're wondering why Hill Giants. I believe this is Japanese again, I think. I'm not 100% sure though, but it looks more, looks more simplified, doesn't it? Not, not 100% sure. Let's, let's check it out. Ah. Uh, Okay, this is this is this is this is tough terrain for me. Let me know in the comments. Is this is this still Chinese? I'm a bit. I'm not sure. I'm not 100 percent sure if this is Japanese. But anyway, this is Hill Giant, and my brother organizes the Hill Giant Cup in Hilversum. So if you're looking, you these are for you. This is coming your way. Talking about people that organize tournaments, we also have um, somebody in the Netherlands who organizes the Dwarven Warriors Cup. So these cards are going to that organizer. And I've got four, four of those as well. And then we've got the Aspe. We got some green cards. Not a lot of green cards though. Oh, only five green cards. I only picked up five. I guess I got those as well. Oh no, we've got green cards earlier. 
Getting confused again, old Japanese. We've got a nice play set of script sprites, which is quite cool. We've got an asp. Yeah, it's pretty nice. So these are all my cards that I that I picked up at uh, Cartmaster. So I just want to thank the guys over at Cartmaster. So it was a lot of fun to go there, and I have to say, um, Taiwanese people are the friendliest people ever. So I know that if you're if you're thinking about going to Taiwan. Go, man. You won't regret it. Um, it seems to me that I only have one Korean card. It just, again, it looks so fake to me. It's not, but just the symbols and it's so funny. And I think, because if I go through here, these are more cards that I already have. I mean, this is, this is Japanese, right? So I'm just going to try to sort them a little bit. So we've got... Uh, we've got more Chinese. I think I'm going to put them here. This to me again. Yeah, this is Japanese. Has to be. This is Japanese. Japanese. Japanese? Question mark. Japanese, Japanese, Japanese. Oh man, this is tough. Now all of a sudden everything looks Japanese to me. Again, you know, please, please let me know in the comments. I was like, before I started recording this video, I was very confident that I could tell the difference between Japanese and traditional Chinese. And uh, I could tell the difference and I could, could show you the Korean card. And, but now that I'm looking at them and just getting confused again. Oh boy. Yeah, so this is Chinese, right? This is Chinese. I think the rest are all Japanese. I think like it's also a bit of a thicker prints like here we've got disenchants right i had disenchants before yeah i mean look at the difference that's huge right look at the writing there's a huge difference so definitely all japanese so these are all japanese um japanese 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 I think I think it's all still Japanese. Oh, nice! We got some more air elementals, but or these are all in Japanese, right? Oh, we got a Chinese one. I can complete my playset. That is awesome. Okay, let's have a look because I think this is gonna complete my playset. I mean, that's what you want in life, right? You want to complete playsets. Look at it. Isn't that gorgeous? I mean, Air Elemental is just gorgeous, but black bordered and, and with these Chinese writing, Japanese writing, it's got something special. We've got a wall of air. Again, I think this is definitely Chinese. Um, Japanese. This I think is also Japanese. Let's have a look, because I, I know we've got the Chinese version here. We can compare them. There we go, here, you can see the difference, clear difference. I really like the the Japanese version more, to be honest. I mean, look at the coloring. This is more vivid than this one. I mean, maybe maybe I'm, maybe people are getting upset with me here, um, but it's just my opinion. <laughs> you know, sometimes people can get quite um, sensible, you know, about these things. I've noticed, but uh, Hazar and Ogress. Um, I think it's all Japanese. Here we go. This is again Chinese. Look at the marking. I, I, I feel like I'm getting better at this. Feel free to compliment me in the comments below. Japanese. Uh, Chinese. Gotta be. Again, uh, Japanese. I think we've got the Chinese version here, right? Um, there we go. Yep. Again, you can clearly see the difference. I like it. I like it. Oops, sorry. Just bumping into my own microphone. Yeah, so this is then Korean. This is, now I know, because I was looking at it, I'm like, is this a real card? Yes, this is called Korean. Yes. To all the Korean people out there, I can now tell the difference between Korean, Japanese, and Chinese. I feel very clever. Uh, drought, I'm going to put that there. Iron Claw Orcs, Japanese, Japanese. This is another set, by the way. This is their version of Chronicles. 
Hey, Magic has so many different versions. Okay, there we've got Hurlum Minotaur. Again, we have that as well. Look, clear difference, right? Clear difference. Japanese, 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 Japanese. Hey, I already had some of these. Hmm, I've got to look this up. I'm not quite sure if this is the Japanese version or the Chinese version. I think there's a way to tell, by the way, because I'm looking at the full stop. If you look at the full stop here, you see that the full stop is the little round dot. Um, the circle, I should say, because it's not filled. You know what I mean? Like it's this one. Um, and when it's a Chinese version, the full stop is in the middle of the symbol, right? So that way I can tell that these hill giants are all Chinese. They're all Chinese. None of them are Japanese, unfortunately. And then we've got Earth Elemental Tunnel destroys a wall. I'm gonna destroy your wall. Who has ever played with Tunnel? If you've played with Tunnel, uh, let me know in the comments below and I will send Tunnel to you. Let me know if you've played with it. And, and don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. Tell me when you've played it and I'll send this tunnel to you. Uh, okay, then we've got um, Fire Breathing. We've got Emulation, The Brute. These are all Japanese. Uh, unholy, no, not Unholy Strength, but Giant Strength, plus two, plus two. The Goblin Shrine. Oh, this is really nice. Red Elemental Blast. Ooh, it's got a big crack thing happening here in the corner. <coughs> oh, that's too bad. Uh, oh, and Mana Clash. Such a cool card, Mana Clash. I want to flip it because you got to flip a coin, right, for Mana Clash. It's a super cool card. This is Chinese. Hey, and we've got a snake. We've got an asp. Japanese version. Old Japanese. Oh, we got Japanese script sprites. We've got the grizzly bears. We've got the gypsy. The gypsy. Uh, land leeches. Oh, this one's nice. Urnum Jin. Pretty, it's pretty valuable, I think, Urnum Jin. Just one Japanese again. Japanese, Japanese, Japanese. Japanese. These are all Japanese. This one's Chinese. This one is also Japanese. And then we've got the Desert Twister. Again, Japanese. Okay, so these are all my, my Asian foreign black bordered cards and I'm saying Asian specifically because I also have cards in German, Italian, Spanish, you name it. Uh, I've got a serious addiction problem with magic cards. I'm just going to admit it here. Um, so this is my collection now of Asian cards. Um, I guess I'm going to try to build a deck out of this mess and uh, you'll probably see it on the channel. Anyway, for now, thank you very much for watching. Again, a shout out to the guys from Cardmaster Games. I'll, uh, I'll leave a link to their Facebook page. You know what? You know, if, if you, if you want to check them out, if you're ever in the neighborhood in Taipei, they still have a lot of old school cards. They were even selling Power 9 cards. Um, so that was pretty interesting. I asked them about like how many people play old school, etc., etc. They told me not a lot. Like it's, it's not really a thing in Taiwan. They do play some legacy, some vintage, but very, very limited though. Most of the players are just into EDH and stuff like that. That's what they told me. But, um, yeah, if you're into magic and you're in the area, it's definitely the place to go where they, you know, have most most magic cards and also some old school cards if you're looking for that stuff. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know in the comments below if I made a mistake with the Chinese and the Japanese. And, and oh yeah, and let me know how you can tell the difference between traditional Chinese and simplified Chinese. Um, I would love to know. So let me know in the comments below. For now, thank you very much for watching and see you guys next time. And now we're gonna try to get a sorting system for this. <laughs> oh, wow! What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
Ik het als ik het zomaar kan zien.